jet fighters. They have this nozzle, so that's the sky. And then this is a, this is the jet fighter, and this is inside the Earth's atmosphere. So what they're doing is they're just using up the oxygen that we have down here, and it's using it to burn out this other end. But what about in space? Because inside of this zone here, we have oxygen. But in space, we don't have oxygen. We do not have this oxygen in space. So what we need to do here is we need to bring our own oxygen as we break through the atmosphere and we go to space. And eventually we can get into orbit or we could even leave Earth orbit. Now, of course, you know about drag here. Like, you know, you learn about this equation later on in this series. You learn, about, you learn about that equation, sorry about the row there, but um, uh, you learn about that equation, and that's our little rocket there. So, let's have a look at this Saturn V rocket. This is the Saturn V rocket, it's just a rocket. And then, this here, at the top, is our payload, fuel, and our engines. Now, in rockets of our time currently, there are basically three basic fundamental things that we have. Number one is the payload. Sorry about the O there. And then number two is the fuel and oxygen that we need to bring along into space because we don't have oxygen down here. And number three are our engines. Now, what about how do we steer on the way up? Now, up until here, it's fine. I mean, below Earth's orbit, you have air. It's not a vacuum like space. You have air, so air resistance also exists. A hammer and a feather fall at different speeds. That's why these aerodynamic fins can help you steer on the way up. So this is a little Saturn V rocket, and that's uh, no, a farm jet. That's definitely not to scale. But still, let's just look at it. That's our farm jet. Uh, no, sorry, rocket on the way up. Until there, the air gets thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. And then slowly, you, you basically have less control over your rocket. And when you come through here, these aerodynamic fins are absolutely useless because this is the vacuum of space. And that's why these engines, which are burning from our own oxygen, which are put on these big rotating um, like hinges that we call gimbals. Um, so you have gimbling engines. Um, so basically, yeah, I should say gimbling engines. And that's how, once you get up here, you can actually steer your rocket. And you get into Earth orbit, or whatnot. So th that's basically the principle of how a rocket works. That's, a, that's basic rocket science. Um, we have payload here, we have fuel and oxygen, and then we have these engines down here, which have gimbals, um, which will be used in space, but, um, and you fire them on Earth and you get up. And then until you get there, the way you steer is by, is by using these these aerodynamic fins. And yes, of course, you have stages, so the rocket separates into little pieces, uh, and then you, you know, place it once you get to orbit. But, but that's all different subjects. That's a different, that's a different video. So we're just going we're just, we're just to talk about basic rocks. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, three, two, one, zero, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. Houston now controlling. Atlantis begins its penultimate journey to shore up the International Space Station. Atlantis now on the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the international outpost. 
30 seconds into the flight. Atlantis almost two miles in altitude, almost six miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center already, traveling 500 miles an hour. The three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back to 72% of rated performance, going into the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier.